that includes all of us. So, um, you know, each player has areas they need to work on, and we're going to work on them. One other question. Um, would you like or is part of the plan for Ben to spend more time around here during the off season, uh working on those things? I know he goes to California a lot. I, for us, the focus is uh, players uh, and everyone putting in the work needed to – to make ourselves a championship team next year. Uh, I'm not focused personally on where it is. I'll leave that to Doc and Ben, but uh, I think the important thing is that you get the work in and uh, and not where it is. Thank you. Tom Moore. Hi, Darrell. Uh, I was wondering, uh, are you confident the Sixers core trio, if you add a few role players, can win a championship, or is that something you're still trying to determine? Well, I'd say we have an extremely good trio. I mean, you don't get the one seed uh, without having an extremely strong, uh, you know, top-end players. Um, in terms of what's the best next step, they give us just three tools, you know, free agency trade and draft. And, um, you know, we're going to figure out how to make – we're going to figure out how to make the team better. Um, the reality is, you know, only one team is left standing every year. So it's a – it's a tough challenge, but we're going to give ourselves. We gave ourselves a very good chance this year. You know, our, our, you know, our chance to win the title uh, peaked pretty high this year. Um, yeah, and obviously, it's a grave disappointment that we're here, and we've got to take we've got to take the next step. And if I could ask one more, uh, you ended up only adding George Hill at the deadline, who didn't have an especially good postseason. I was just wondering where it ranks on your list of offseason priorities to augment the bench for next season. Well, I think that's one thing we love, the young players that are pushing our, um, our veterans. Um, you know, we, I actually thought, we thought George Hill actually did play very well. I think uh, people are a little bit focused on the offense, but defensively he was very strong. We thought he added quite a bit. Obviously it wasn't enough. So, again, in terms of my own self-reflection in the front office, um, are there opportunities where we could have do, done more? And I think that the answer to that is yes. And um, you know, that's on, that's on me, but, um, but yeah, no, I think long story short, look, if, if there's a veteran out there that makes sense to add, we're going to add it. We like what George Hill brings. We like what uh, all our free agents bring Danny and, and Furcon. Obviously they're going to have choices just like we do. Um, and we'll, we'll see, but we also really love our young players, uh, who had some great moments in the playoffs, uh, and how they're pushing our veterans as well. Keith uh, Daryl, what do you think this team is missing? Uh, that's a that's a good question. Pretty, can you be more vague, Keith? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well, let, let, well, let I'm kidding. I'll, I'll 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 answer it. I'll answer it, Keith. I'll answer it. You said that you know you guys thought you know this is a great opportunity to win a championship. You didn't. So the team was missing something. What was this team missing that you can go get in free agency to help your eyes out? Yeah, I mean, you want to go into the playoffs as the favorite to win the title, and, and we weren't. Um, look, you know, ultimately, ultimately you win or lose mostly with your players. Uh, it's my job to get the best players. Um, you know, frankly, we didn't beat people enough. We didn't have – we didn't have – quite good enough players now i again i love how our young players are pushing our top players i love uh the reaction that doc got in the locker room with with everyone in the meetings he's had today with everyone saying how they're going to improve um the reality is like look we we need to we need to be a, overall a better team with better players and you know it's it's we need improvement from the players who are here and you know we need better players brought in and you know we'll we'll make that happen so but in terms of specifics i can't really give you that in, in regards to ben um is there a commitment to him being on this roster next season we're committed to this group. Look, this well, this was a, a really good group uh, that played at a very high level. Um, you know, I obviously part of my job is to self-reflect. You know, read what others are reading because you can are writing because you can 
you can learn from that. Um, and, you know, a lot of what I'm reading, I, I frankly don't understand, you know, people saying the Sixers are in a bad situation. You know, I don't choose to come here. Doc doesn't choose to come here if this is a bad situation. I mean, really 25 or 26 teams in this league would love to be in our, our situation with an MVP caliber uh, top player, an all-star, a near all-star, great young players who are signed for the long term, good veterans. So we've got a good foundation. We just have to do better. I have to do better. Everyone has to do better. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's, that's the bottom line. That's the challenge. And I can, I can tell the, to everyone in Philadelphia that, uh, you know, there's going to be a ton of effort up and down from myself at the front office, the coaching staff and the players who are being challenged, you know, as we speak in meetings with Doc Rivers on how they can get better as well. Thank you. Mark Narducci. Hey, Darrell, at 28, uh, have you looked at this draft? Can, can the Sixers get anybody that could maybe be a rotation player? Well, again, I think – I feel like we pulled that off this year. Obviously, Maxie wasn't, uh, you know, every day in the rotation last year, but um, we feel like he has a really good chance to, to step into that rotation next year. Um, that's super rare for anyone picked in the twenties, but you know, I, I believe in our scouting staff. Uh, I believe in our coaches ability to develop these players and put them in good roles. Um, and it's a pretty deep draft, uh, in that range. So, um, you know, if we keep the pick, I mean, frankly, you know, I'm someone who likes to move up, move down, uh, optimize the draft. Um, but if we stay with that pick like we did last year, I feel good about uh, the players that would be available, yes. All right, Kevin Kincaid. Hey, Darrell, what can you tell us about the extent of uh, Joel's knee injury, and do you know if he's going to require uh, off-season surgery? Yeah, I mean, I think we're all super impressed what uh, what Joel was, uh, was able to do. I mean, he's the – you know, sort of the heart and soul of the team and, and what he did every night for us is, uh, will be forever be appreciated in terms of like what's next. Uh, I know they're going through a full assessment of him right now, the medical staff, uh, along with, uh, Joel and, and his, and his, uh, very good team of advisors. And, uh, the next step will be determined from that. How much of that, if I can follow up is, is based on what he wants to do versus, uh, you know, recommendation from you guys. I think, I mean, look, Joel is one of the smartest players I've ever worked with. Um, and he likes to take lots of input from, you know, pretty much every top doctor in the country. And, you know, taking all that input, um, you know, the best decision will be made at that point. Kai Carlin. Hey, Daryl. Um, if we could just real quick um, go back to, to Ben. I know Doc said, I think after game six, that he would like to have Tyrese on the floor sometimes with Ben. Um, is it maybe time to kind of realize that, like, or at least consider that maybe he's not a point guard, you kind of move him to the power forward position, like full time? I think that's frankly a better question for Doc and actually his coaching staff, you know, they're, they're doing quite a, quite a few meetings this week. And, uh, I expect they'll have, uh, another offsite or, uh, um, continuous meetings after that um you know i leave to to doc and his staff and i think you heard doc i agree with him how tremendous the staff around him was um to give us in the front office like hey here's here are the things we're seeing and then it's our job to find the uh to find the players uh frankly a lot of doc wanting to play maxi i think was really more maxi related that, that we were seeing in practice what he was able to do and I think the best coaches like Doc, they they don't sort of pre-script like we have to play X way. And, and, and in fact, I thought Doc just did a tremendous job with the roster. And, um, you know, it's 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 a roster that uh, a lot a lot of teams as 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 we play in Houston are playing a, a, a certain style. Uh, but our best players play a, a different style and to to take that mix uh, especially with the where the rules are at in terms of like how much perimeter contact is allowed versus paint contact to take that mix of players and turn it into the number one team 
uh, in the East, and uh, obviously, just you know, we didn't get as far as we needed to. But I thought the job that Doc and his staff did uh, was tremendous. And and long story short, with players like Maxi, like some of it is like you can't always say we need X and let's go get X. If you do that, it creates challenges in terms of building the team. And so I really appreciate appreciate the coaching staff's ability to say, okay, we have these set of players. We're going to come up with the best way to use them. And they, they did that very well all season. Thanks, Daryl. Noah Levick. Hey, Daryl. Uh, something Doc said just yesterday is he thought when Tobias left the floor, the team turned small very quickly. And then also the, what you want to call the Tony Bradley spot is not something you guys ended up filling uh, post deadline so is depth at those four and five spots something you saw as a weakness and is it something you feel needs to be addressed this offseason yeah and I think that's the kind of feedback that Doc and his coaching staff giving the front office is good and to be fair that was to his point that was feedback we had all year um Look, it takes two to tango. Once once you're in the season, you know, you're down to two tools. You're down to one tool, really, trade. And uh, nothing really presented itself that allowed us to address some of the things that Doc was looking for. Uh, obviously, Tony gave us tremendous minutes. Uh, you know, I made the assessment that, um, you know, that George Hill would, would help us more um, than uh, the, the Tony Bradley role, to, to say it. And... You know, is that right? I think it was still right. I still feel very good about George Hill, but those are the kinds of things that I think a good uh, organization does. Look back, figure out what you can do better, address it, and, um, you know, attack going forward. And um, so I think all these questions are fair. And I think, again, I just love how Doc framed it yesterday and challenged all of us to figure out how to get better. And I think that includes uh, the front office. Amy Fadol. Uh Hey, Daryl. Um, Tobias Harris said after game seven that uh, it was maybe a little bit of fool's gold at times during the regular season, saying it's totally different. Defense is totally different in the regular season versus the postseason, where the adjustments can be made on the fly and it's possession by possession. And that he said that's something that they need to learn. And going into the off season, I guess my question is, did you think it was fool's gold a little bit for the Sixers success in the regular season versus some of the teams and that how can they improve upon some of that mental fortitude when it comes to the playoffs? I have to apologize. You cut out right at the beginning for me. What was the very start of your question of what was fool's gold? I apologize. Uh, he was just saying the regular season versus the playoffs oh, because yeah. the regular season defense is, is not as Yes. You know, amped yeah. up as it is, and, and some of the numbers can maybe be a little bit skewed. Yeah, no. Look, I I don't know if fools go – I 100% agree with what he's saying, that, you know, generally in the playoffs um, on, on, on defense, the teams get to scheme and they're going to start to attack your weaker defenders. And on offense, you know, they're going to take away the easy options and, you know, you're going to get into less – less efficient off, uh, options. So in terms of, uh, in terms of that, I, I completely agree with him if that's what he meant. Um, and uh, look, that's just part of building a team. Look, we're building a team to, to win the championship, to win in the playoffs. So those things have to absolutely be factored in. And the regular season is different from the playoffs. Sometimes people make that difference too big. You know, that just like they'll say defense win championships. No, it actually helps to score too. So, so it, I believe that that's true, but it also often gets overstated. Yeah. Thanks, Sarah. Eric Bodner. Um, in the past, there has been some resistance um, from Ben on working with uh, shooting coaches or trainers that the Sixers wanted and also in changes to his form. Has there been any buy-in from him on if Doc has a preference of who he works out with that he will, and if there's changes in mechanics that he will. Yeah, to, with, with respect to the fact I wasn't in the meeting, um, but um, my understanding is that, uh, you know, Ben is just like all our players. They're all in on uh, the organization. Uh, the relationship Doc has with the players is extremely strong, um, and and his staff as well. And, um I believe and we, we would expect for the players to be willing to do whatever is necessary. 
Dave and Merton? I think they're all, regardless of what happens with them position wise, um, I mean, your top two scoring options this postseason were, were a big guy and a four. Um, you know, an agile four, but he's a four. Um, he's not necessarily built to, to consistently get to the rim against the postseason defense. Um, I mean, you look at the guy, you had Harden, you look at Dane, you look at Chris Paul. Um, you know, not necessarily star wise, but do you, do you need a guy in the perimeter that can, that can, you know, I mean, with all due respect to Seth, he's a specialist and, and you guys are running your offense through him at times. Um, do you that wasn't like very, that, that was very respectful to Seth. <laughs> <laughs> Seth, you know, what? one thing is, can I just talk about Seth for a minute? Like he's, uh, Seth is Seth is improving before our eyes, which I think is super exciting. Again, a testament to him and and what uh, what Doc's been able to do. Uh, I'll try and answer your question, David. If I don't, just jump back in. Sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you. I thought. Um, no, I mean the point is Seth, Seth's not going to shoot eighty percent from the field every day. You know, like he's he's a he's a three point guy. He's not necessarily guys going to get to the get to the rim. I don't know. He's a curry. He's a curry. So maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> um, to, to answer your question, though, look, that was part of why I was saying I was. Sorry, I'm getting an echo now. OK, it's gone. Um, that was part of the reason I was very excited about the job that Doc and his staff did, because uh, I do think that, you know, Tobias and Joel are two primary scorers. Um, they're both extremely good players. I mean, pretty much every team in the league would love to love to have uh, both of them. Uh, and and that yeah, the league is challenging right now for bigs. I, I do expect the league to address this. How quickly they will, we don't know. But I know there's quite a bit of discussion, uh, even in Chicago right now at the pre-draft camp, about uh, how the game has completely tilted towards perimeter players and. Uh, what is allowed contact wise what is what is called as a foul uh, on the perimeter versus in the paint um, you know look we I, I'm not I'm not looking for the league office to make changes to help us so to answer your question I do think the league has made having your your uh, top players be big guys a challenge uh, I think our coaching staff did a really good job optimizing within that Um obviously we, we'd love to have all stars at every position, right? I mean, like um, we have to like see what's out there. Uh, we can't overreact to anything that just happened, but you can also can't underreact. I know that that sounds like GM speak cause it is, but it's also true. Like we have to make the decisions that are best that are available over this off season with free agency trade and draft. And, if we go in with like we have to do X, I know that doesn't work. I've been the legal. You can't go in and say well, we need exactly this. If you if you do that, you you'll fail because you need a whole set of options and then pick the one that optimizes your championship odds. And I thought we did a good job, not great job, at doing that last year, and we need to do a great job this off season. But I mean, is it, is it really saying that you need X to say that you need a guy that that can, you know? handle the ball and break down the defense and, and create a little bit in a half court offense. I mean, that's, that's the whole reason why you guys went to Maxi. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, I guess I'm challenging yeah. the notion that we don't have that. Yeah. I'm challenging that notion now. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe, um, maybe we obviously could do better. Uh, and some of those options are in the form of younger players that sometimes you do, you know, everyone's nervous to count on, but you know, we, we really believe in the players we have, we need to do better but we believe in a lot of the players we have and uh, pretty much all the young players that are pushing our, pushing our veterans. Thanks. Thanks. That's Franklin. Hey, Daryl, I was mentioned yesterday, uh, yesterday about the culture of the team. I wanted to get your assessment of the culture and also how do you balance that when you're looking, when it comes to personnel, how much do you factor in culture and will that take effect in this upcoming offseason? Yeah, I mean, uh, not to praise Doc too much because I feel like I am, but um, but I, I think it's deserved. Like um, he's come in, he's got. We had a really good team environment. Uh, everyone playing together, everyone pulling for the team. Uh, I think uh, Doc did a tremendous job in my role. Um, culture when you have the number one seed in the East, when you have a championship contending team, uh, is. 
I find it to be one of the most important factors. And so uh, it's, a, it's a huge factor in, in our decision making. I think when, when I sort of dial that down is, you know, and Philly fans have gone through it, uh, during a rebuilding phase, I think you you often have to focus on it less because you might need to take uh, risks on some younger players that may that other teams don't want to take risks on. Uh, but we're not in that situation. We're we're in the situation where we need to make sure that the players we bring culturally fit with Joel, Ben, Tobias, the group that Doc's put together. That's a very important factor. Thank you. Howard Eskin. Uh, Daryl, uh, I want to go back kind of towards the beginning when Keith talked about uh, the future of Ben Simmons with this team. And I think it was a clear indication, like asking, w will he be here? So I'm asking the question, can you tell us that Ben Simmons will be a 76er next season? I love your questions, Howard. I would say, look. I love them too, Carol. <laughs> we have a very strong group we believe in. Um, there's None of us can predict the future of what's going to happen in any, in any place. Um, we love what Ben brings. We love what Joel brings. We love what Tobias brings. Um, in terms of what's next, we're going to do what's best uh, for the 76ers to give us the best chance to win the championship with – every single player on the roster. So what you're saying is, uh, if the possibility is there to improve the team, and that moves, means moving Ben Simmons, that you would do it? I'm not addressing Ben Simmons, but any move that will help our team win the championship or improve our odds, you know, we will look at and do if it makes sense to, to do that. So the only thing I'm trying to ask is, will you look at the value of Ben Simmons as well as any other player on this basketball team to improve the 76ers? So you just define the job of a general manager, which is to assess everything, assess every player on the roster, figure out what is best to do with them to help us win the championship. So yes, I'm going to operate as the general manager of the 76ers and I appreciate you defining my job description. Okay, I appreciate your responses, even though you may think they're difficult. No, it's okay. I, hey, you're a big part of this market, Howard. Love you, <laughs> love you. I love you too. Let's go to Chris Krauss. Hey, Daryl, um, I just wanna ask a macro question. Um, when you, when you believe in trust, do you believe it's a thing that's given or is it earned? And how does that differ at different levels of an NBA organization? So interesting question. Uh, so trust for sure uh, develops over time. I mean, I think uh, the best way to think about it is like a, a bank account that you make deposits in. And unfortunately, uh, you know, often trust is easier to lose than gain. Um, uh, and and, and I think that's something Doc does a really good job of is uh, getting each player to trust their teammates, uh, trust the, um, you know, the, what, what work it takes to get better, trust uh, the schemes and what he's asking them to do. And I think we did a good job growing that over time and obviously with uh, good regular season success and, and, and next season we need to translate that into, into playoff success. Um, and I, I do think it, we have a really interesting game basketball in that it's, it's a selfish game uh, that's masquerading as a team sport. Um, and the best way it's played is as a team sport. Um, and, and uh, you know, again, I, I feel like I've learned a lot from Doc. I've learned a lot from all the coaches I've worked with. But uh, this past year has been, uh, been really positive for really everyone. Uh, to, to be with a championship caliber coach and uh, what he brings to the table in terms of, um, you know, how he demands, you know, excellence from everyone. Thanks, Daryl. Jackson Frank. Hey, Daryl. Um, you talk about kind of internal improvements, but also bringing other guys um, potentially. I'm curious, maybe like, what are some of the qualities or skills that you might look for from internal improvement for guys or, you know, in the in the avenues to improvement external that you've, you've talked about 
Yeah, so we, we don't we don't have a lot of like, you know, buttons to push. Uh, you know, when you have three uh, you know, top level max players, that's actually the ideal situation you want as an NBA team, but it also starts to limit your options with um, sign and trades and you know how much mid level you have and how much cap room you have to sign so it starts to limit um, all those things so long long answer to your question is internal improvement is probably the bigger lever um, and the nice thing is because we have young players because we have players who you know we think have areas that you you can obviously improve it's pretty rare frankly to have have top players who are already performing at a very high level in this league who also have things that you can point to and say like hey if if we can improve that the team can get a lot better that's pretty rare and it's actually an opportunity not a not not a negative uh when you're looking at how do we take the next step um all that said even though they've limited the tools we have in terms of free agency and 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 trade and draft uh, obviously, you know, my job is to explore all those and, uh, and we will, but I would say more internal improvement than, than, than external. And just as a follow, like are there certain skills or qualities from the internal improvement you'd like to maybe be prioritized, you know, ideally? You know, frankly, I leave that to doc and, and he's meeting with the players and challenging them. And, uh, um, I think it's, I, you know, I wish basketball was rocket science sometimes because it would, it would allow us to create more of an edge. Um, but, you know, it's I think it's pretty straightforward what, what certain players need to improve. Brian DeBorg. Hey, Daryl, uh, two quick questions. One, in terms of George Hill, I know only, a, I think, 1.3 million of his contract was guaranteed for next year. Do you anticipate whether he's on the team or not? Do you anticipate picking up the rest of that? Well, again, not, none of those determinations have been made, but I, I will say that we really like what George brought. Um, he's just the kind of guy you want on a team trying to win the championship. Obviously, he's gone very deep in the playoffs many times. Um, so we, we really like what he brings, but in terms of like any decisions on contracts, uh, none of those decisions have been made yet, and uh, we're, we're going to be sitting down with you know every – every player and, and ownership and, and doc and, and make the right choice for the team. And then just a bigger picture, bigger picture question. Um, what lessons can you learn not only from this Hawks series, but you know, the playoffs in general, the teams that are left, do you see any similarities among the teams that made it to the conference finals that you know, give mm -hmm. you something that you want to emulate moving forward? I love that question because it is something we, we really do study, which is we, we generally benchmark that, we want to make sure we're, you know, a conference final team, obviously, or better. But uh, if you just try to compare yourself to championship teams, actually, the you know the the information you glean can get really skewed. You know, it's just like it's, you know, it's the Bulls six times. You know, oh, we should have Michael Jordan. Great, we learned a lot. Um, but so yeah, if you if you broaden it to look at the conference final teams, I do think you can look at patterns. Um, and again, I think it's something you can over and underreact to, but. Uh, to your point, um, that is, you know, we haven't done all those assessments, but I, I, I really appreciate your question because I do think it's a, uh, it's an important type of benchmarking that, that, that we do do. Now, if you, you can identify like, hey, we need that. That's the thing that the league is rewarding right now. Um, but there, you know, the path from here to there may not be possible. So it's, it's, you know, it's a dynamic thing. Look, if this was easy, like more teams would win the, win the uh, title. I think that that's why the NBA isn't trying to add a mid season tournament. So like, you know, there's more stuff to win because, you know, frankly, only one team winning their last game is, uh, you know, your odds, your odds suck. So, but that's the challenge. All right, we have time for two more. We'll start with Austin Crow. Hey, Daryl. Um, <clears throat> not just in this series, but in, in general, um, there were times when it was pretty difficult for your team to, to score. Um, and I'm curious, what needs to be done to alleviate that issue? And then number two, does that take the form of multiple moves or one move? Uh, I think multiple versus one is a little hard to address because I don't know what's out there. But in terms of like, yes, we need to be a better offensive team. 
Uh, I think there's, and, and I know Doc believes this, there's internal improvement that can help there. And then I think there's obviously um, potentially some external improvement as well. But, um, you know, like just, just take, uh, you know, the game seven, you know, at home, which is just just incredibly, I'm still like stunned sitting here that, that we didn't win the game seven at home. So, but one of the big reasons was Doc did a really good job getting our guys to push uh, in transition. And actually we even got in transition in game seven, but somehow only made 40% of our shots uh, off their misses. And it was just the, I mean, that's, that and Joel have been the lifebloods of the offense. Uh, half court is Joel, and transition it's Ben, and it's getting out. And you know, frankly, Ben and others made some incredible passes in transition, but we just didn't we didn't knock the shots down in transition. I mean, to a level that I'd have to look, but I think it might have been our worst performance. I mean, Tobias has been unbelievable in transition, was getting the same shots um that he's been getting all year and they were rimming out you know i mean i think you can i mean we're two days after you can tell it's a little raw still i mean like the i think you replay that game seven a bunch of times and you know uh we execute better and and we win but look the reality is reality we didn't do it and and frankly if we're squeaking by the second round that just tells me we're not we're unfortunately not good enough probably to win the title so we need we need to get better but um you know that game that series is still incredibly painful thank you all right time for one more question and we'll go to dan gelson hi Dale. um ben ben said a couple of times during the the playoffs his free throw struggles were more mental than with his form how do the fixtures help him or any player deal with mental issues during the season and how can they help him in the off season when he's not necessarily around the gym as much? Yeah. For all our players, we have, uh, uh, tons of resources. I think that's one thing I've been, you know, besides Josh Harris and, uh, giving us every resource to, to help, you know, in terms of like the acquire the players on the court, um, the resources we have available to players is, is really unparalleled in my career um, that's available for the players. Now, can we do better? Yes. I mean, everything needs to be assessed. And, um, uh, you know, each player is going to have a different, a different plan and a different approach. Uh, but the resources for sure are there uh, and uh, will continue to be there. And, and a quick follow, I mean, do you want him to play in the Olympics? Have you asked him not to play in the Olympics? So with the Olympics, we I've always personally made that. I didn't have a conversation. I've always personally made that a, a player decision. Um, I think uh, uh, – I don't know what his decision will be. I think he may have talked about it with Doc. Uh, I'm focused on the 76ers, not really the Olympics. And uh, uh, if he plays, uh, I'll, I'll – be very excited for him unless he's playing in the United States uh, in the finals. Um, if he doesn't play, I think he'll be, you know, he'll be working on his game. Hey, Daryl, thank you. Could, could that take away from working on his game? No, I, I think it could. I think it could. Uh, frankly, uh, it could enhance it because you know, there's there's skill work, but then you know, playing in games is helpful. So, again, I I don't have I don't. I'm good with whatever decision he makes, like I am with every player, but.